outside today. Describe as I think the first two words that come to mind is uh, caring and passionate. Oh! Wow! Wow! Uh, hardworking, smart, and uh, very calm. We can start with old, elderly, mature, aged, senior. <laughs> uh, Ash is uh, super supportive. I think he's uh, the type of uh, coach that you know you always feel like he has your back. I think he's a great friend as well. He has a lot of energy and um, very kind. I think that describes Ash as a whole. Positive, quiet, boring. Hi, I'm Ashley Ash Ratti, and I'm the head coach at Gateway. I was born in a city called Leeds, um, and I've lived my whole life in Wakefield, which is also a small city in Leeds. Pretty small place, it's known for, people call it Shaky Wakey, because it's like a, a questionable like nightclub sort of place, but um, it's a really nice place to live. Uh, I, I didn't really get into gaming until I was maybe 12 or 13. Uh, I was just playing sports kind of all the time. I spend every every single night out in the streets playing football mostly, uh, cricket or whatever kind of ball we had available. And I think when I was about 12 or 13, maybe something, I think I got PlayStation for the first time, which is PlayStation 1. Eventually I got a computer, uh, which was just for school. And then after a while I uh, had to lie to my parents to say that I needed a better computer for school so I could do my schoolwork and that was just so I could play Counter-Strike uh, for the first time because my friends got me into it. So I didn't really start so early, but when I got in, I was hooked. I have a dog at the moment who doesn't live with me because he can't live with me because of where I live. But a dog called Marley is a little Maltese terrier who I love to bits and I try to see him uh, as much as I can really. He comes and watches a, a cricket he gets brought, brought down by my stepmom, So it's nice to see him and I think that when I don't see him for quite a long time, I actually feel very sad and I feel like I need to go see him again. Uh, which is kind of weird because he's with my parents, so I think I want to go see them more, right? But I just miss him. I, I, I grew up with him and he'd sleep with me like every night on my bed. And that was for six, seven years or something like this. So there's like a real bond I feel I have with him. So it's been a little hard moving away from him, but I still get to see him, so it's still nice. And uh, yeah, my girlfriend for sure. She's super supportive, talked to her every single day, no matter what. Um, and she's more invested now, I think, than I am. She's telling me the scores of games that I don't even know are playing and talking about players and things. And she had no background in Counter-Strike whatsoever. So it's very new to her, but she's got the passion for it <laughs> because I'm playing it, obviously. Um, but yeah, she's a massive support for me right now, yeah. Uh, for, for my job, I think it was when I was 28, maybe, or 29, maybe, some, something around then. I was serious for me though, way before then it was, I'd say when I was 22, 23, I was playing it almost every single day. And it was a real passion for me and I wanted to go pro. It was not so easy, I think, in being in the UK, there's kind of no scene or anything like this. So there's a huge problem that between LAN events, teams just had no reason to play. So we'd kind of just semi-retire and I hated that. And I think it made it almost impossible to succeed in the UK. Straight in there, needs to get the frag. Will we have to predict it? Yeah, it looks the right way, but he can't connect the shots. Ash wins it out, gets in there. The clutch is his. You frag 7 5. Um, but when I got to, I think, 27, 28, I, I talked to one of my friends. I remember speaking to him in the pub and saying that uh, if anything I want to do in my life, it's Counter Strike for now, and I'm really passionate about it. My um, dream would be one day to go and do it as a full time job. And a few years later, I managed to quit my job and give it a go, and Game Legend gave me that chance. And from there, it's been all good. I just wanted to stay in the game. I'd love to have done it as a player, to be honest, but I could just see I wasn't getting any better. I was getting slowly worse and people around me were getting better and 
I felt like I had a lot to offer still. I remember I was still playing with Mezzi at the time before I managed to join a team called Vexed. FM, they need one pick on towards Griffs to shut this one down. Stan's going to start things off onto the baser, and Ash gets a very nice headshot on towards Fry. He's got himself an M4 now in towards the backhand side of the FM defensive. He's now going to be putting themselves into in between the rotation coming on through here. Nilzinho's still going to take down Griffs, and uh, Ash going to come through and take down Weber a three on three. Nilzinho's tagged up, and Ash comes in from the balcony, takes him out. Um. And I felt like I was just holding the team back, but I could still have lots of things to offer and I was so passionate still. So I just decided that coaching was kind of, I wouldn't say it was new at that point, but it's something that, it seemed like I had a career path down there and it seemed like a long-term way of me staying in Counter-Strike, which is what I really wanted to do. So I say seeing myself get worse was probably the, the push to make me kind of go, I need to do it. <laughs> it was really sad. I, was, I genuinely remember like, almost being, I think I was in tears actually. I think I was actually re really upset. I remember saying to Mezzi as well that I feel like I'm putting so much time in and it's just not helping at all, I'm getting worse and it was really affecting me but I think it had been affecting me for a couple of years before then because I could feel myself not improving anymore and that's kind of what the whole journey is about is for, for me for Counter-Strike is you've got to be improving all the time I just felt like I wasn't and it was really, really upsetting to be honest. It kept my career going for sure so actually gave something to do as a full-time job rather than as a hobby I'd say so I'm glad I did it in the end, maybe I should have done it a little bit sooner but I don't really have any regrets about it. Uh, so I was without a team um, with a Vex game in the UK team. The Valorant came out and it completely destroyed the team. Some players went, some players stayed. So it was just myself, a guy called Adam9130, who was a close friend of mine, and Mezzi, who's now playing for Vitality. They both went to Game Legion and I was kind of without a team. So I messaged the manager at the time, Igor Bornebush, and I said, if you guys need second coach or an analyst or something, I'll come in, I'll do it for a few months, I can do it for free. Um, I can't do too many hours because I'm still working, but I'd love to do it. And if at the end of it you feel like I'm worth bringing in, then please, by all means, let me know and we'll talk about things. Obviously it was a big draw for me because as a team on paper I thought was very good. They had Rusty, they had Eru, who I'd seen a lot of um, coming up. And being with Mezzi, I think I was with every team with Mezzi for maybe five years and I kind of wanted to go there again and Adam9130 as well as a close friend of mine I've seen a lot of potential in him. So it's kind of like this is the team I would really like to go on and I have a lot of hope in the roster and I think it has a lot of potential and if I could get in there it'd be like the best place of anywhere I could pick and I feel like I'd have somewhere, someone in there who knows what I can bring and that would be a lot of trust for me, it would give me a lot of confidence. So. Yeah, I got a chance to come in and I worked for a few months and then at that point the, the coach at the time, uh, Gux, I think it was called, he said to me, I think you're better at this than I am, so I'm going to go do something else. I think you've got a job offer somewhere or something and he said I can do it. So I did that and came in and then Mezzi I think left maybe a month later and got bought by Cloud9, but it was, I was, it was still like great to be there and I think that they probably helped me get in the team and yeah, it was a great opportunity and I have to thank them for probably what they did to get me in and then it gave me a chance to show myself. I'm very happy with my choice, yeah. <laughs> I think it's just what I needed at the time. I needed a full-time team, take a step up, not go straight into it, have someone there that I knew and see something in the lineup. I think some people just take what they get. Like, for sure, it was a, an opportunity that I wasn't getting from elsewhere and this was like the opportunity that I thought was perfect for me at that stage of my career. So I think the timing for it was but perfect. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it can be very hard to be a coach sometimes. I think that you have to be very stable in kind of everything, especially with the, the mental side of things. You've got to be never affected by anything, the losses, people's mood or anything. You have to always come in with a good attitude and you've got to look, we've just had a bad form. We've got to look straight into demos and watch things again. And sometimes the last thing you want to do when you've lost a really tough game is watch the games back. And then when you're at events also, it's just a lot of work. You never really get any time to kind of relax and the traveling and the leading up to the events and then afterwards you're reviewing again. So I think that if you get to a later stage in your life to come into this, if you don't have that energy, this can be extremely hard. I think now it's kind of, it's just about the right balance. And now I need to make sure in my own life, I have a little bit of time to make sure I can keep going all the time, but for sure it's not easy. Part of the description at this point that you need to be stressed, you need to be giving it all, all the time. That's the only way you can get your best out of yourself. <laughs> I think I've, I think I've done good jobs, yeah. I wouldn't say all of the time. It's hard to be doing a good job all of the time and it's a lot of pressure and I think I put a lot of pressure on myself as well to be always trying to do a good job and that means that 
sometimes it's just not so good and if you feel like you're not doing as good of a job then you don't feel you're doing a good job. I like to think that I'm doing a lot of good things and it's more of a long-term project but certainly in some days I feel like I should be doing a little bit more or I haven't had the time to do this and you feel a bit of guilt sometimes that you can't do it and then other times you just feel like you're doing a little bit too much and that's when um, you can feel a bit of the stress really taking control and the burnout kind of kicks in a bit and you realise I need to take a step back or this could be really bad. I think I'm pretty positive when it comes around the team and at least I show positivity. Sometimes I can be a bit negative, but I think I'm very good at hiding that. I think that I'm very passionate and I think it kind of rubs off on the players. I think I have a good blend of kind of a little bit of everything without being exceptional kind of anything. So it's it's been like, you just kind of see what you need to have and you kind of work on it all the time. So I don't think there's anything out there I would say that I'm poor at, but there's definitely things out there I could be better at. I'm happy for people when they, they move on, if it's a big step up in their career and obviously if they were benching them or something else, then it's definitely more sad on that side. Um, but generally it's, it's just part of the job, you have to just get on with it and move forward again. Like it's, it's good for the players who make that step forward, but the team itself needs you back there straight away, they need you focused. And I think as well when I felt it as a player, if a player left the team to join a better team, it was really down for me, I found it really hard. So I feel that's my, kind of my job to get everyone going again and looking forward to the future no matter who you lose or who you have to get rid of it's it's the the, the bigger picture is just going forward and I think that's that's on my job to get everyone focused going straight away but for sure it's really sad sometimes I've noticed people for years and years and years and I'm happy for them and also it's a bit sad knowing they're not going around anymore. I think I don't really set goals in general to be honest I think until recently anyway I don't really set goals I kind of just go in try to do as much as I can and get everyone moving forward and getting the best out of everyone. So obviously we had goals at the start, it was survive in the, the Mountain Dew League MDL, which was really hard, especially when we lost Mezzi, who was probably the best player in the whole division. And I think that was maybe six, seven months of just hanging on and just getting through and knowing that if we don't have these, then maybe the sponsors drop out and maybe there's no Counter-Strike team for Game Legion anymore. Eventually we got to a point where we could actually stay in there and we made some roster changes and then we started making progression. So I don't think I ever looked and thinking, oh, I'm going to win a major one day. It was kind of, let's go up through the ranks, let's try and get to some tournaments, let's bring the best players in we can. I was unbelievably proud during the major final for sure. I remember been walking on the stage and I was so proud because I, I said to them just before that I think you're going to get booed because you're not know, vitality. And I just felt that if they could go out there and shake it off a bit, it would be amazing and it came up and they were getting booed and all the faces, they're laughing, smiling, and not worried about it at all. And they walked down and I've never felt so proud of like, anything in my life. It was unbelievable and this experience was un literally unbelievable. I remember looking around in the crowd and seeing people chanting Game Legion and I've never seen anything like that. I've never known playing Counter-Strike and having support really of a, no like a normal fan and seeing maybe a quarter of the stadium chanting, cheering for us. It was just unbelievable and I'll never forget it. It's the same sort of task that we've had before. We kind of just get better every day and see where it goes. But I think now we've added so much energy, enthusiasm and talent that the skill ceiling is very, very high as long as we're able to stay grounded and not get too many egos and keep working super hard. I think this is a, a new environment for half the team now where they're kind of playing online, doing what they want they don't have anyone really noticing. And then they come up, they go to the big events, I see the fans and the crowds, and it can affect people differently, for sure. And now we need to keep them grounded going forward and learning all the time, but I'm super, super excited about the players we have. I think the lineup has finally got a good balance to it, which we were really lacking before, which we knew about when we, we built it, but it was the best of what we could do. And now finally it feels like we have the pieces that could really mesh together and hopefully myself and IMD, we can build something a bit special because we really believe in the players we have and it's super nice having so much motivation again and seeing the guys want, really wanting to play all the time. So I'm super excited about it.